Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm, establish, and the suggested meaning of angel is messenger. So my guest and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, Jane Burnham. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live or at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I love to help women to crossroads in their past, in their life, heal their past, create their future and transform the present, so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy, and I use future life regression, past life regression, guided meditation, angelic Reiki, angel oracle cards and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. And I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny and a journey through lifetimes. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided or angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Jane Burnham, who will be talking about why it's important to take time out for nature and nurture. Now, Jane is an ex-Londoner who escaped to the country 25 years ago with her husband. She has learned the benefits of taking time out for nature and nurture herself, especially after having her daughter and leaving corporate life. Now, Jane has tried to raise her daughter to appreciate and enjoy the beauty of the countryside around them, which has been an interesting journey. Now, whilst owning their own woodland and living with nature, the family decided to share what they love and the skills they've learned, along with the benefits to mental health. Now, this has led them to set up their own beekeeping and well business, wellness, be, wellness business the, called The Way to Be, alongside Jane's business, The Angelic Reiki, where she assists those looking for a holistic way of healing using angelic Reiki. Now, it was through living and working with nature that Jane realised for her own mental health that she needed to look after herself holistically. And after trying various holistic practices, found the calling to learn and practice angelic Reiki. So without further delay, hello, Jane, and welcome to the Angels of Destiny show. How are you today? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. Looking forward to speaking to you. Brilliant. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both Jane and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please do not be shy. So Jane, why don't you tell us more about your journey and why it's important for us to take time out for nature and nurture? Okay, hi. Um, basically, as you said, um, about 25 years ago, uh, we were living in the suburbs of London and commuting to our jobs and um, at weekends we would go out and spend time on uh, a boat that our father-in-law had and every weekend when we went back to the suburbs there'd be like a cloud coming over us where we were like oh I don't actually want to go back you know and we would carry on and after a while we were like this isn't really working for us now I was very close to my family and the personal reasons wanted to be in the city really and be close to them but we made the decision to actually move out and I was the one that was very hesitant to do this because you know it was so against everything I knew I'd been brought up in that environment my family my friends everybody was there but we we quite bravely went okay we'll try it and see well the the moment I drove away from uh, the city um i never look back i mean i have never looked back i just love the fact that you know i can <clears throat> i could even when i carried on working in the corporate sector i would drive um excuse me through and see sheep on my journey and the sun and the the, the things that i didn't notice before you know because i was just in the rat race just going to and from my nine to five job and I thought that was the be all and end all of life, but I started to realize there was a lot more out there. Um, you can take, uh, you know, the girl out of the city and I, I still love going back and, and, and meeting people up there. And obviously not currently, we can't do it. And I get a buzz from that, but I no longer want that to be a part of my life because I've learned that there's so much more to life really. 
Um, as a small child, um, <clears throat> I used to visit, <clears throat> excuse me, my uncle who lived out in the countryside and, and actually lives not far from me now. And I had that calling then really, but didn't recognize it. I just found so much peace and calm. Now, unfortunately, you know, circumstances in uh, my life once I moved out, uh, things with family and illnesses and deaths in the family, had some uh, tragic circumstances which really rocked my world, um, where I found that, you know, um, everything I knew and everything was, was falling apart, and I was starting to fall apart as well. But gradually, I've realised that, you can take so much peace and calm and tranquility, even when you're in the, the, the darkest of places, you can just simply take a moment to breathe and to look outside and to see what's going on in nature. And it sounds really kind of hippie and I'm, I'm not really, really a <laughs> hippie person, you know, but I've just begun to appreciate the little things that are really important in life. Um, and I would have been the person that before would have said, nah, that's not for you. That's not really what you're about. But now it is all that we're about. And since um, having my daughter, I left my corporate uh, life behind, decided to spend the time bringing her up and have spent a lot more time in the countryside, enjoying nature and <clears throat> taking her out, even her, her nursery time or preschool, pre-nursery we're, we were finding things that we could do that involved nature and going to the seaside. And, and you have that opportunity with the child to find your own inner child, I think. And I found that that was, you know, really beneficial to me and, and has continued to be. So it's always there. I mean, you only have to take that five minutes to go, okay, let's just breathe and take in what's going on and just, switch off and it's become you know a, a thing now hasn't it being mindful but it was always there now people are a lot more aware that they need it especially today you know with the circumstances where we are forced to um you know stop to think to listen and take that moment um and yeah i i you know i have seen the, the benefits of it not only myself but you know with other people around me that have had you know really trying times and, and problems serious problems to deal with and they've been able to find solace in, in doing things in nature we decided uh, crazily before it was a, the thing to do to go and buy some woodland um probably about 20 years ago and everyone you know the rest of our family were, what do you want that for? You know, why do you? <laughs> we just had this calling to do it, and and it did seem crazy at the time. And luckily, we were fortunate enough to be able to, to buy our own piece of woodland, and then we would just go there and just love being there and learning new skills and and learning green woodworking, just having a campfire, sitting out, staying out. You know, um, once it got dark, you know, not going and shutting yourself away, being out there and hearing nature around you. And then we started to want to share that. We've always wanted to share what we've got. Um, I feel very privileged to have those sort of things. So we would arrange, you know, family parties, friends coming over to our woodland. You know, every single birthday my daughter had would be in the woodlands. And her first birthday, I think it was actually snowing, you know, and people still turned up, you know. They were, like, just dragging themselves to this kind of crazy party we'd arranged. And, and had the time of their lives, you know, just switching off for those sort of few hours and enjoying just having a community around you. And if, if anybody spoke to me, they'd probably say I'm not a particularly sociable person, but I love those little intimate gatherings that you can have. And to give those people around you that experience has been fantastic for us, you know, to to see how that's benefited them and, and even our kind of aging parents coming out into the woods and, you know, making that effort and just cozying around the fire and learning things to cook. And um, and we're always learning. We don't know everything. We, we, we've not done everything yet. And that's the great beauty of it. And I think um, it's just 
important to do those crazy things at times that take you out your comfort zone and and share them with if they work um it's it's felt like a really good thing to do and um more recently um my husband started beekeeping and what started as a something that just kind of interested in has become a passion and has grown exponentially to something we, we didn't imagine to the point we had you know hundreds of buckets of honey lying around we were like what are we going to do with this you know there's only so much we can eat and then we were like okay there's actually a little business here and that has evolved into you know me going out and selling to farm shops locally and doing a few markets and things like that and I am not a salesperson but I've put myself out of my comfort zone to do that um but this product it doesn't need to be sold people can't get enough of it we can't produce enough of it you know it is um people will have read you know about the the benefits of honey and all the properties that are good for you and a lot of people are um you know kind of like put off honey because they they eat the stuff you get in the supermarkets can quite often be just blended watered down potentially yeah. not pure raw honey but when you you take honey out of the hive and you eat it there and then that's a different kettle of fish you know I, I didn't think it would make a difference but it really does you know and and being able to share that with people has been a lovely another aspect that we can you know not only sell our lovely product but we can share, share our knowledge of, of doing that as well so that's where things have evolved now so we're trying to, to launch our new business doing that but yeah it's 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 very difficult to explain but it just has such a beauty about it now i'm not actually the beekeeper i'm more the producer of the honey the jarring the selling um and i was very very scared of you know um wasps and bees i used to do a fantastic bee dance or wasp dance if one came near me <laughs> now i will let them sort of land on me and that is incredible to actually gain that sort of trust wow. from an animal or an in insect rather which i didn't have at all i had a lot of fears in me and i've learned you know over time that you can overcome your fears and quite often nature shows you a way to do that if you look for it um, so it has become you know a beautiful journey that we've been on so yeah that's that's kind of the, the background to us and where we're at and what we're hoping to share with people more and more so, yeah that's, 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 that's absolutely amazing and I have to admit I actually do do use Jane's honey um, from from the bees, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, so uh, so if you haven't, do check do check out uh, the the honey because it is oh my god, it's it's so nice. Uh, it can, it can just tastes fish. so nice. Mm, no, it, it, it's it's a different kettle of fish. It really is lovely, um, you know, and it it and it it's good for you as well. So you know, there's not many sugars that are good for you really in that sort of way. So. I mean, the, the buzzword at the moment is is vegan, isn't it? Everyone wants to be vegan and going down. And I'm not a vegetarian. I do, you know, eat meat still, um, but less so probably. But I think that people should be vegan, not vegan, because um, the principles of, you know, the bees will make honey for you whatever you do. You know, they're just going to keep making it. They will make more than they need. You're not robbing their hive, which is what used to happen in the past. Was you know people would destroy a hive to get the, the product. When with the sort of, um, sort of domestication of like, bees by helping you know them control how much they produce, it, you're not controlling them. They're just producing it. And if you're a decent beekeeper. And we, you know, really try to look after our bees and not unnecessarily kill any or anything like that, not treat them with chemicals. It's very organic what we're doing. Um, they will, that you can take and, and they're not, you're leaving them plenty for them to overwinter and things like that when you get into it. 
I think the the bad name perhaps that beekeeping has had is where the commercial kind of entities have come in and they literally just strip, you know, what they can. It's kind of the, the way the world has gone, isn't it, where, where we've become yeah. greedy and taken too much and making a money-making venture. Well, this is not what we're about at all. We're about just sharing those benefits with the bees looking after our bees and um hoping that they can produce for us some years they do some years they don't you know it, it's so dependent and it's made me so aware of the cycles of nature you know some years will be dry in the summer sometimes it'll be damp you know there might not be enough daylight uh, sun coming out it really is a bit of a lottery we we're always hoping for a massive bumper crop but we don't know what we're going to get and then on years where you think oh i don't think it's going to be that good you get this amazing bumper crop and you're like wow okay we've got plenty to, to share so yeah it's it's very interesting how you get into the cycles of nature and how nature you know we're not uh, working against those bees that we are encouraging we're actually producing more hives and trying to create more hives and, and get them out there because we all know that the world is you know desperate for pollination i think um one of the facts i know is that like one in three mouthfuls of food that we eat actually need some form of form of animal pollination you know so it, it's something we really need more of you know we need more beekeepers out there doing this even on a, a small scale even if you just have one in your garden in the city that's fine you know there's plenty of city beekeepers and you know we can tell you how you can do this um it's getting that out there and getting that balance back to nature so we're not taking from nature we're working with nature in balance that's what i like to think that we're doing you know um <clears throat> a lot of uh, commercial beekeepers and, and non-commercial may use chemicals to treat diseases that bees have got because it's it's meaning that they don't produce enough or you know well we try and find natural alternatives to that um so we don't hamper the product that we're taking and it's just finding alternative routes uh, and i think that's a good life lesson for us anyway isn't it that we can yeah. take alternative routes in, in what we do we don't have to damage things and go full steam ahead there's always another route you can take that is a lot more balanced and, and taking those moments to just sit back and go and breathe and and get yourself balanced is so important um yeah. i mean my sick journey i i've realized that it's so important to look after yourself you sh and that's not in a selfish way but in a self-care kind of way to get the best out of you and to be able to give the best to other people you really need to you know take those moments and that time to think about what you're doing and and breathe and stop now that's something i never used to do when you're in the rat race and you're just constantly up against it and we're, we all have busy lives still you know you still have pressures of schooling especially at the moment with homeschooling and people tearing their hair out doing that i mean thankfully my daughter's senior school now so it's a big issue but there's a lot of mental health issues going on in the world now you know where people are struggling because they're you know isolating and, and homeschooling etc but you can still find even if you just look out the window and find the sunshine on a sunny day or the, 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 the moon coming up on a, a dark day you know there's lots of little things that can help bring you back into balance um and as i say you know the, the benefits of doing something working with nature is is fantastic you know you're learning so much all the time and, and gaining so much knowledge um yeah I don't, I don't know it's just beautiful the way that you can work with nature and share I and mean, we don't only do beekeeping we, we do um, stuff in our woodland as well like charcoal making just to get people to stop and do something different you know you might never ever do it again in your life but 
the people that come and, and spend the day just actually sitting and taking that time out for themselves and doing something that lights them up for that moment is, is worth so much. And to be able to focus on things that light you up rather than bring you down just for five minutes a day can make a massive yeah. difference to your mental health. You know, it can be overwhelming. So many people get overwhelmed. I myself can struggle with being overwhelmed with too many things. You think, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, and, and somebody's got to do this. It, they don't actually, if you just stop, it will still happen. The world will still turn without you for those five minutes. It's, yeah. you know, really, really important. Really important. And it's great. It's something that you've actually learned, you know, that you've learned yourself to, you know, to to cope when when you have um, issues and 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 stuff and stuff going on in your life. Um, Absolutely. To, to actually, you recognise that and go, oh, I need to take that five minutes to myself. Absolutely. Yeah. And I used to feel guilty for that. I used to feel guilty for actually stopping. Now I really enjoy it. You know, I really enjoy it. If I, if I'm stressed and, you know, still get stressed and under pressure and, and other people, moods affect you or whatever, just to take five minutes and just go and breathe and step outside. For me, being outside is much healthier place for me than being stuck indoors. It's not always possible. The weather, you know, the weather or whatever, even just looking out the window is just going to lift your spirits just for that moment then you're much more able to cope with the things that are being thrown at you that are dragging you down, basically. Um, and it, it sounds so simple, but it really is that simple to actually just take that moment for yourself and, yeah, to actually enjoy the beauty of what you have. And it's, sometimes it's, you know, it's really difficult when you're in a, a dark place and, you know, believe me, I've been to some dark places where I didn't really know how I was going to get through to the other side um, but now I recognize that there is always another side you know you will always get through um, tragedy does come into our lives and, and lives are about learning lessons and they're not easy it's not a bed of roses you know and um, not everything is, is straightforward but if you can you know see that there is just that light there that you can build on taking time to do the things that are better for you even if it's a very small percentage of the day is going to make a big difference to how you cope with the rest of that day i think that's what i've learned that it really doesn't actually take that much to turn things around um which is very very enlightening really to actually find that you can do that. I mean, I was obviously um, driven to the kind of holistic approach and I was pretty brought up with a lot of that with health store stuff and, and dabbled with things. But when you're in a place where you, you really don't know where to turn, a lot of people do turn to holistic practices and try different things I did and some resonate with you and some you're just like don't really get or they don't actually work for you but I definitely found that Reiki um, was incredibly powerful when I was actually in a place I didn't know how to get myself out of I had one treatment from someone and it just blew me away that I could actually turn and be rebalanced really in that that moment and that's why I was then driven to go and uh, seek training and find out more about this because I was like wow this can actually work for me and I was in a bad place you know then I want to know more about it and I just knew that I had to not only just go and learn about it but actually learn and teach it not teach it um practice it I didn't just want to do it for me I didn't just want to do it for my friends and family I wanted to share that because I find that uh, you know the healing that you can give and receive is amazing and I don't have to question what 
that is now whereas my scientific brain before would have been trying to work out well how does that work what is this for you know now I'm just like okay that's rather beautiful I'm very grateful that that works because that worked for me and I know it will work for other people so I enjoy sharing that I enjoy you know giving the angelic reiki because I know it's going to help people um and that's that's that lights me up to do that. You know, I found something that I enjoy and that I can share and it, and help other people. So, yeah, that's that's really yeah. beautiful. So, 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 so obviously, you you initially had um, uh, your psy reiki was was your was your was your first treatment. So yes, it was actually. Yeah. To, and, and, Angelic, angelic Reiki, because although they're, they're they're very similar with the same symbols and everything, obviously with the angelic Reiki, it's the angels coming in. So, how did you kind of like get into um, to learning angelic rather than your psi Reiki? I didn't even know at the time there were different types of Reiki. To be honest, I'd heard the term Reiki, and somebody I didn't even know if somebody suggested it, but I was driven to go and get a treatment for myself, and it was so fantastic. Then I started, you know, these things come to you when they're meant to come to you. And I, you know, I started receiving emails and I was like, oh, okay, you know, then maybe I could get some training. There were a couple of different leads I went on and I was like, and uh, then I was wanted to find how I could actually do this and, and do it. And yeah, I was very apprehensive about stepping into that kind of unknown world of it. Um, but never again, never look back. And I think, you know, like I say, when I, I took, when you take big steps outside your comfort zone, they normally bound you into a place you've never been before and, and way beyond where you were. And you don't always know why you're being driven to do that. In my case, it's my intuition saying, this is what you need to do. And, uh, you know, there'll be, subliminal messages or whatever you want to call it that things that are just telling me that you need to just do this it's going to do you good and you can't reason why but you just go ahead and do it and yeah I'm so grateful because since I've done that I mean not only have I learned a fantastic healing method but it's brought lovely people into my life that I didn't have connections with before and I think you know it's a bit like the um the hive mentality again where we're all there everybody in the every bee in that hive has a job to do and can help each other they don't have they don't work on their own it doesn't work if you work on your own you have to work in collaboration with people in different ways in business and in your personal life you know you give to that community whatever it is that your skill is and, and finding it sometimes can take you an awful long time you know no spring chicken now but I know that those lessons that I learned building up to it mean that it's so more meaningful than if I came out of school and learned it you know it wouldn't have meant anything to me I wouldn't have had that experience life experiences do build you to who you are um, so the good and the bad actually makes you the person you are now and uh, I've come to realize that it's very important yeah it, it really is yeah, definitely. oh that, that's amazing and sort of like you know you, um, you, you've obviously brought your daughter up in in the country um mm. and that so obviously she kind of like has you know the the benefits of the nature and the holistic side you know but how does she balance balance that with sort of like everyday life because I can imagine if you're going to school a lot of your schoolmates aren't going to be really into that kind of thing. No, I, th I think we're, we're all guilty of that probably, that, you know, it's not the cool thing to do or be. Um, but if you can recognise that you don't have to sort of be anything different than who you are, you just have to take that time for you whenever you need it. Um, and, you know, children don't always recognize when they need it so their parents can actually help with that you know take them out take them off their tablets take them off their phones we always say you know technology has its place but sometimes you know make them go out and currently just go and build a snowman or whatever it takes but um you know it 
it's yeah it's not always cool is it to to be different but actually i don't think it's about being different we're all unique we all bring different things to the mix we all bring unique qualities you know that and irritations and everything whatever it is that's, that makes us who we are i think so many people now want to fit in they want to feel you know they belong to something well, you don't have to belong by fitting in in that way you don't have to be the same as someone else you don't have to be a clone of someone else to be able to fit in um, and like-minded people will be drawn to you anyway i think um you definitely find you know solace in what the things you do and what you share with people will bring the right people into your life i'm a great believer of that now um you know and the previous me in the corporate world where you're just driven to you know get this do that result make this try and impress somebody da, 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 da. well the minute you leave that world you don't exist anymore you were just a number you would just you know no matter what people said to you or whatever the company will carry on the business will still do its stuff and you will be kind of like forgotten there's nothing memorable about that, you know, but at the time it is your whole world when you're driven to do that. And there's probably a time and a place for that, but I'm in such a better place than I was then. You know, I can choose what I do when I do it and I can, and I count and the people that I help, that's life changing for some people, you know, it really is like it was, you know, the, the lady who gave me the Reiki, it was life changing. It literally was. I walked out of that a different person and with a better focus. And I don't, I mean, she did speak to me, but it wasn't that, it was the treatment, you know. Um, I was actually physically sick when I came out of that because I, I really needed that treatment, you know, I needed to start clearing stuff and to start dealing with what i needed to deal with um so to be able to bring that to to anybody is is a wonderful gift to her and use yeah, yeah. definitely yeah it, it is ab absolutely brilliant so, so so you mentioned something about people um then do child making so so do you have you know can people stay where you are you know do you you know do you um, do other woodland stuff for people the woodland stuff that we do is kind of like just come and spend some time around the campfire you know just literally something really simple like that or you can come for a day and we'll make some charcoal so that's another process you can you learn rather um we also have um an off-grid holiday cottage which we by default had to build off grid because we weren't able to connect to the grid and um, so again we would sort of forced into the eco side we had you know it was like okay you can do nothing with this building or you can try and make it work and we have and we've been probably well, we had that working for about 10 years now and people come and and enjoy holidays there for the kind of main six month season and then out of season we can use it to show people what we've done so it's completely run uh, on battery power uh, with solar and uh, yeah that's been a massive learning curve because when you know sort of 12 15 years ago when we started thinking about it doing it didn't have solar farms we didn't have lithium iron batteries we didn't have all these things we had to find a way around the problems again that we were you know forced to to face and we did it and most people that go there don't even realize it's off grid because it's just a normal two bed cottage in the countryside that they stay in you know there are limiting resor limited resources and it's become you know the, the buzzword now to be eco and whatever and do these things but yeah we kind of forced into doing that before we didn't even know what we were doing you know <laughs> we just but we did it you know i mean the roof is made from recycled tires and things like that um you know we come across some some different products that we were like yeah actually this is a good idea why let's make a use from those tires that have 
have no, no purpose, you know, let's repurpose them. And, and we managed to find companies that did things like that. And recently we've upgraded all our systems because the batteries have evolved and then we bought new ones a couple of years ago. And so we've got some really nice, easy to manage ones, which are much better than the first ones we had that were a very big learning curve. But uh, yeah, no, we, ha we have gained knowledge as we've gone along. And so, yeah, we can share that knowledge with people as well. Yeah, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, and and it, and it's amazing how these these all these things happen. That sometimes you're forced to do stuff to learn mm. that actually turns out to be a real benefit for you. Um, exactly. In, in in the end. Yes. No. I mean, at first we were like, why can't we? You know, people are being obstructive. People are being rude. Why can't we do this? You know. And it forced us to find an alternative. And I, I think that's what life is about. It's about finding how you get through those problems and how you overcome them <clears throat> and at the time they can seem completely overwhelming and not within your knowledge to understand how you do that but you can find a way and and there are always people that you can talk to and, and they will help um, and just try it you know if it doesn't what's the problem if it doesn't work you know you start again with something else I think, you know, you can have so many versions of things until they eventually go, oh, okay, we cracked it, this works. So, yeah, I mean, even that applies to some of the beekeeping, you know, things that we've tried um, to extract honey from crystallized frames and that. We've had various, you know, models of things you think, oh, that might work if we warm it this way and create that with this and just sort of almost like Heath Robinson things put together and in the end you come across a solution and you go, oh okay it was there all the time you need to do it this way it's it's yeah it's part of life's challenges isn't it and it's yeah. nice to share those things now we've got the solutions so people don't have to go through that learning curve all this so yeah Oh yeah, that that's that's absolutely brilliant, you know. And you and you're help you're you know, you're helping bit you're helping bees because obviously they are on yep. decline. So if, if you're looking after them in a natural as as natural way as you possibly can, you're increasing them because yep. as you said, we need the bees to for pollination. Oh, and, we absolutely do. I mean and and it luckily people are becoming more aware, you know. Um the more bees are out there the better i don't think we can have enough of our na sort of natural honeybees out there and you know like a, a hobby that started with one hive we ended up with 28 i think one year that's that's quite a lot that's quite extreme you know but not suggesting everybody does that but even if you know every person had just one in their garden one hive which is really easy to manage and quite rewarding you know um it kind of makes such a difference to the the overall ecology of the planet i think it's 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 a lovely thing to do and they reward you with a product you can eat and you get the beeswax as well you can make lovely candles you make beeswax wraps whatever and you know it's just it's a win-win for everybody actually the bees, you know, thrive, you look after them, you you don't exploit them. I think people are naive if you exploit them because you don't, you know. You, you look after your bees because if you don't, you won't have any. So it's yeah. kind of like foolish to rob them of what they need. You know, put their needs first and then any bonuses for you, then that's, that's lovely. And there is nothing like, you know, getting a piece of honeycomb straight from the hive and, and tasting it. I mean, we've had, um, you know, daughter's friends come round and we've been honey spinning or something. Children just love it. They can't get enough of it, you know, just seeing that process. And adults as well, you know, just to see honeycomb, you know. Sometimes you can buy it in shops and it's normally set by the time it's in the shops because it can set quite quick in the, the comb. But actually just to taste honey, you know, Put your finger in it and just eat it. It's delicious, yeah, and good fun, yeah, yeah. And then the you know fact with the candles and the bee wax wraps, um, you know, and it's something for the whole family, you know, like your, your daughter can make candles and. Oh yeah, no, it you know, is a family business. Skill. Yeah, no, it is a family business, and uh, candle making is not straightforward. Actually, <laughs> you, that's another learning curve. You know, you think, oh, just chuck a wick in and off you go. Then you've got to work out what size and you know things like that. But it's such great and fun. Air bubbles. And... 
yeah <laughs> and if it dips in the middle yeah, it's too big yeah, and yeah. It's, but it's great fun learning and you can't do any harm it has no toxins you know it actually benefits the air a lot of these candles you know you can go and buy a hundred cheap candles but they're putting toxins into the environment we should be aware now that's not good for you you know you burn beeswax candles they purify the air they help you so again it's another beautiful natural product that we can share with people and people can get their own and yeah i just think it's a, a beautiful way to go definitely which is why we set up the way to be yeah absolutely and it's definitely something that uh, people should check out so as you know i do um, guided meditations and angel oracle card readings and each week i like to ask my guests what they would like me to do so jane would you like me for you and those watching to do a guided meditation or to pull an angel oracle card Ooh. I think an angel oracle card. Yeah, I've got them in my hand. Definitely drawn to my angel. <laughs> okay, well, let's see what the cards are. Um, Thank you. I've got in store. And of course, as you know, when I do the cards, I don't uh, do the cards to predict the future. Um, uh, I use the cards for what you need to know for your high school at the moment in time, which can sound contradictory as I work with the past and I work with the future. <laughs> but when I work with the past, it's to heal the past so you can be fully present. And when I work with the future, it's so you know your future, you're not worried about it so you can be fully present. So, what does Jane and everyone who's watching this? And of course, if anyone's got any questions, you know, please do um, put them in, in the comments. Um, so what does Jane and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Jane know? Oh my God, it's so per the most perfect card. Begin now. Take your first step. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Does it all, doesn't it? Does it, it all? It, it, it Love does. It. So, you know, it's it says, um, you know, as, as Shane did, you take that one step and when you take that one step, it leads you on to the next step and then that next step will lead you on to another step. And before you know it, you've got a whole new community, um, a new purpose, a new outlook in life. So, so take that first step today, whatever it may be, no matter how large or small, just take that first step and just see where it actually takes you. That's beautiful. I love that. It is. Absolutely true. You just need to take one little step. It can literally be a few minutes that can make a massive difference to people. And it's it's beautiful to actually start to make those things, those steps to yeah. go on your journey. Yeah. So apart from that insight, Jane, do you have any other insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? I think it's just realise how important you are. You really should come first. And we're not brought up, you know, you're, you're brought up in the kind of culture that is kind of, don't be selfish, don't do that. You know, It's so important to get you right because if you're not right, you can't be any good for anyone else. You know, if your cup is empty, you can't feed anyone else. So look after yourself. Find what lights you up do whatever it takes to do those little steps make that time for yourself and make that time to evolve into who you're supposed to be rather than fighting it and always fixing other people's problems because i spent a lot of my time doing that it's it's not actually what it's all about what it's all about is getting you right so that you can be part of the community you can help and share and give so much more if you're in a better place yourself. Um, I, you know, I, I think sharing is actually the caring thing to do, isn't it? You know, um, if children who haven't been, you know, in a nursery environment or whatever, they were, they would just share stuff automatically with whoever, wherever, whatever, and be friends with everyone. We kind of close ourselves in as we become adults and go, oh, that's, that's not the done thing. Are they right for me? Are they wrong for me? Don't be that judgmental. Just, you know, 
share with your community, uh, especially at the moment. So important. Um, I've uh, in my village, we managed to set up a group, and I actually started it because it wasn't one to look after the elderly and vulnerable. You know, I, I've got to know so many people and so many lovely people helping doing that, volunteers that are helping me to help other people. And it's very rewarding to do that, you know, and it doesn't take too much time, to be honest, you know, when you delegate and other people help and, and make such a big difference to the people that really need it at that time. I love being able to kind of spread that community spirit around. Um, so it's very important, yeah, look after yourself so you can help others and you will yourself be helped, yeah, definitely. Uh, absolutely perfect words, so thank you so much for that. No, so thank I you. hope everyone that you enjoyed this and you found it insightful and the words of wisdom Jane has given you will help you move further on your journey. So Jane, if people want to learn more about beekeeping or woodland stuff or if they want to um, connect with you for some angelic crakey, how do people do that? Right, well, everything is on our website, which is www.thewaytobe.co.uk. And uh, there's links on there to our products, to our courses, and to angelic reiki as well. So, yeah, everything should be on there. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Perfect. Oh, you're welcome. And do do check out the way to be. The honey is gorgeous. The beeswax are, um, candles are lovely. The rat the wraps are really good. Um, and although she doesn't, uh, though it's the, the, the apple juice is absolutely gorgeous. So yeah, if you have reached that crossroads in your life, oh, yes, apple juice. Mm. So <laughs> if you have reached that crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I would love to be that guide for you. Please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call um, to uh, work out whether I can help you on your journey and whether uh, um, it is something that you want to work with me for. And of course, we have the Angel Wings community, which is where you get a chance to grow with Ascended Masters, Archangels, Gods, Goddesses, Oracle Cards, Guided Meditations and other members to spread your wings and your and soar. And of course, you can always sign up to my free weekly newsletter um, where you get a couple of free gifts to de-stress yourself and some guidance. So thank you everyone so much for watching and I would like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more women who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And of course, if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, do hit that subscribe button and the bell to be notified of any future shows, guided meditations and everything else I put on my YouTube channel. So I look forward to you all joining me next week, same time, same place. And again, thank you so much, Jane. It's been wonderful and a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.